So for my day 10, I think it's 10. Yeah, day, day 10. Um, I'm going to talk about something super exciting that I uh, got in the mail the other day and email, I mean, whatever. Um, I went ahead and did the Ancestry DNA thing where I wanted to find out where my family came from because there's a lot of convoluted stories on both sides. My grandmother, I'm going to close my desk thing, it's making noise. More noise. Okay. Ooh. Uh, my grandmother always told me that we had European Jewish gypsies and all this random other stuff on my mom's side of the family. My paternal grandfather always insisted that somewhere along the lines there was some kind of Native American. Okay. So maybe uh, they weren't both. They were both not correct. My maternal grandmother was they, uh, to some extent. There's some European Jewish and also like Israeli Jewish heritage in there. Not a huge percent. Um, so I was excited about that. Zero Native American. So nope. Uh, not that I wouldn't want that heritage. I think it's super awesome. I've had visitations in my own home from spirits and energies that I felt to be Native American, where I live in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, it's very common. Uh, actually, I'm right near a swamp as well. Um, it's very common to literally your neighborhood be built on a place that was one uh, at one time inhabited by Native Americans. In my case, where I live is Piscataway, in a uh, Native American tribe that was all in the area where I live and work and play and whatever else I do, travel. Uh, in a day-to-day -day basis. So hmm, a little sad on that point that um, my dad's side of the family wasn't uh, accurate. But I am 97% European. And 74% of my background consists of what would be England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, and Germany. All of like the Gaulish kind of area from what I am understanding. A little bit of Spanish and Portuguese, a little bit of Italian and Greek, 15%. Um, Scandinavian, which I was very surprised about. That's not something anyone has ever brought up in any kind of family uh, scenarios. I'm looking at it on my computer right now so I can make sure it's correct. Um, and little Finland, Northwest Russia, and your Eastern European, all in very small percentages. Um, but I was super excited to find out that I was 74 percent of British Isles based as well as some of the more Gaulish areas you know France and uh, Germany particularly and this kind of brings me to what I want to talk about about the Morgan I have heard and read on various forums and blogs and things like that about co-opting someone else's mythology um, that it's not okay. And I'm here to tell you that who calls you is who calls you. If I were called by ISIS, if I were called by, uh, I can't even, Loki, if I were called by, uh, Athena or some other, you know, pantheon that I do not have lineage in, I would listen. And while I might not, I would not try to co-opt the culture necessarily, um, were I called by like an Egyptian god or goddess, I would, I would not get Egyptian tattoos. I would not get, uh, dress up in that necessarily. I don't even let my kids be a nationality for Halloween. They have to pick a person and be that person. So... I'm very, I feel like I'm very conscious of not wanting to do that. Um, and I was happy, a little bit relieved, you know, that I was so European, <laughs> so to speak, so that I could not, I think, be seen as co-opting somebody else's um, ethnicity or pantheon, uh, the Celtic or Gaulish traditions, the Welsh British Isles traditions, they're mine, uh, that I can, uh, 
that I can uh, do that. But like I said, even if I were called by a different pantheon, I would follow it. I know plenty of people who are not of European descent and they still follow the Morgan. And that is rad because you know what? She transcends ethnicity. She transcends gender. She transcends uh, sexual orientation. She transcends age. And I mean, what the only other person that I know personally on like a day-to-day -day basis that's not like an online buddy um, that follows the Morrigan, she didn't even find her until she was 65 years old. And she was way into her crone stage when she found her. And she's nearly 70 now. And she spent a lot of time just praying to God and goddess and that's cool that she didn't find the calling until way late and that's awesome maybe the Morgan didn't need her or feel like she was needed until then I'm going through some stuff and so I think there was a preemptive strike a few years ago when she very specifically called to me and that's cool I'm rambling now because what I was talking about is ethnicity but like I said I don't think if some Southern, South American goddess called to me that I would go, nope, you're not for me. So I guess the way that uh, some people deal with that is by picking kind of a vanilla kind of person, um, either somebody from a different, from, from like literature or movies, film, comic books, TV, something like that to represent that. And that's cool. I'm going to do a video on pop pantheons that I have for the Morrigan um, coming up, mm, you know, once I do a little bit more research. Uh, so maybe in the next week or so, I'll be posting that um, about some things that appeared in my life that I maybe should have recognized. Um, as a Morgan uh, calling, so to speak, through what uh, the way that I felt about certain characters in books and television, film, comic books. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that uh, I'm super excited to find out that I'm Irish. Big, the biggest single percentage was Irish, and that was 29%. The biggest single percentage of that 74 was 29% Irish. So I will be 40 in the next few years, and uh, I'm thinking about giving myself a 40th birthday present trip to Ireland, and I know that there are companies, services, guides out there that literally do a Morgan tour of Ireland, and I'm really, really strongly considering that, and I think it would be super amazing um, to go, and I can't wait to think about it, let alone do it, talk about it, plan it. Um, and I am very excited about it and I just wanted to share with you my excitement finding out my heritage and that it, it links so strongly to uh, the Celtic Pantheon and history of the Morrigan and um, I just I, I've, I've never said this here I've said it to a couple friends before but I have very vivid it's not a dream because it never happens when I'm asleep very vivid like daydreams or something almost um where I could just be sitting at my desk typing for work this is my office if you couldn't tell at work um very vivid like visions almost it's almost like a remembering of something a deja vu except it's not in real life it's something that seems to have happened centuries ago and very one of them is about very violent um it's very legit bronze age looking blade and my hand is covered in blood i can tell there's something else wet all over me probably blood there's smoke there's mist there's fire there's yelling there's crying and screaming and i am on top of someone just holding them down just getting at them just stab 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 i i'm in armor i can hear it clinking as i'm moving not armor like you would think of like a knight but um almost like a the clinking of like belts on each other and then kind of like the rub of leather together where it makes that kind of like like I don't even know how to describe it. it's that leather sound you know what it's you know what the sound is anyway so I am also planning at some point when I can find somebody to help me do a past life regression to kind of find out a little bit more um a friend of mine that does spiritual services um it's a shaman he's told me a couple things but that's not what he does so he didn't 
want to go super deep into that. Um, so yay Irish, yay Morgan, yay Celtic, yay maybe going to take a trip, yay so many things, yay past life regression. Um, I'm excited. That's my day 10.